Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the board um, of the town of Sunderland, and it's uh, May 10th, 2021. I'd like to call to order at uh, 634. So um, our newest select board member, Crystal, commented last week about how easy the meeting was. So we decided to give her a, uh, a new easy meeting. So we got a whole bunch of stuff to accomplish tonight. <laughs> got spoiled last week. Yeah, she did get spoiled last week, but uh, <laughs> uh, so we're, gonna, we're going to, we have an agenda that's posted. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start and Caitlin, are you giving us the COVID update tonight? Or is that, is Lori there? Lori's here. Lori? I, I didn't perfect. prepare for it. I was just here for the uh, other thing, but. Nope, Lori's here, so we can do Lori. I, I didn't see Lori initially. So uh, Lori, you want, let's start off with you and the uh, COVID update, please. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. It's been a great week. Usually um, I'm notified on Mondays that we have a new case in town and that wasn't the case this week it was very nice so the last time I was notified of a new case was actually last Wednesday so we've been quite a few days without a new case in town and it's it's great um, according to the data I have our the next report that'll come out will show that we have six active cases over the previous two week period and that is the same numbers last time but it is definitely downward trending. It's very good. Um, and the other good piece of news is the FDA has approved the Pfizer vaccine for um, children ages 12 to 15 today. Oh, good. So that's a good thing. Um, I also attended the round table put on by the FERCOG today and they are having trouble filling vaccine slots. Um, they're having lots of trouble filling um, vaccine times. So it is very, very easy to get a vaccine and to sign up. And lots of these clinics now are doing walk-ins. Um, so if you still need a vaccine, it is, it is very easy to get one now. So, uh, so Lori, Sir. Um, just want to add that, uh, there, there is going to be a vaccination clinic Sunday at uh, City Tree Brewery over in South Deerfield. It's gonna run from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, you can make, you can make, if you go to the FERCOG, you can go, you, uh, or you go to the town of Sunderland, you could uh, register there, or they will be do doing walk-ups as well. Um, if you do walk-up, I would recommend that you're there between 10 and one, because, um, that would be the preferred. That would be the preferred time, um, and we will be doing the uh, Johnson and Johnson. Uh, so it's a one shot. So it's a one shot this this uh, Sunday at City Tree Brewing over in Deerfield. But 10 a.m. to one may get extended out to three. But come over and uh, uh, get your vaccination. And I would just like to thank all the residents of Sunderland that are volunteering to work at that because there's, there's a number of Sunderland residents that are volunteering well with Deerfield, Whiteley, and Conway. So good job, guys. I also just want to mention, I checked uh, right before the meeting um, and uh, I was going to get the statistics of the Sunderland residents who have been vaccinated and they have not updated it since April 27th, the last time I gave those out. So just so you know, uh, the state has not, they're supposed to update it every Thursday and they didn't. So um, it's the same statistics I handed out last week, just so you know. But if, if anyone wants to know them, I know Jeff has a copy and I can pull up a copy also. It's a neat, it's on uh, mass.gov if anyone ever wants to check it themselves. But uh, it goes count by county, and then it also goes, sorry, I have a beep. <laughs> it goes by county, and it also goes by municipality, and it does statistics on 
ages, who's been partially vaccinated, who's been fully vaccinated, um, the type of vaccine. It's, it's, it's a nice little chart. It's a little difficult to read. Um, so kind of do it, you know, peruse it and don't take it as the Bible because I'm pretty sure as with all the statistics we've been getting off mass.gov, they are not 100%, but I think it's a really good snapshot. Good. And what is interesting as with our COVID cases, the same is with our uh, vaccinations, the bulk of the people being vaccinated are that age group of between, uh, I would say between 18 and 50. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting bulk. Excellent. Uh, Laura, you got anything else to add? No, I do not. Okay, Jeffrey, Jeff, you have anything to add on the COVID front? No, I, I was just going to pull out some highlights of the vaccination numbers that, that Caitlin had just mentioned. Um, you know, I think 62% 60, uh, of residents 75 years and older are fully vaccinated, 77% of people 65 to 74 in the town are fully vaccinated. Um, people over 30, over half are fully vaccinated and 75% of those people have had at least one uh, vaccine. So I think um, great numbers and thank you for, for passing that information along, Caitlin. It was great. Excellent. Okay. Anybody else want to add anything about uh, COVID? Um, I think the uh, the board is would be really happy to, if we could make this like a five minute instead of a 50 minute discussion, right, Lori? Um, that means we're, we're making progress. So Caitlin, Lori, thank you very much for, for the update. Now, we're gonna talk about uh, something that a lot of us have been sitting on our edge of our chairs waiting to talk about for a long time, including Caitlin. We're going to talk about mosquitoes. Um, Jeff, you want to uh, give us a lead into a mosquito conversation? Sure. So this year, uh, the state said, I, I guess there was legislation that passed that, that um, unless municipalities opt affirmatively opt out, um, the state can come in and do uh, mosquito control once the Department of Public Health has determined that there is a public health hazard and has issued a certificate. Um, the state typically does that through aerial spraying. Um, I think it's called adulticide, which means killing the mosquitoes that look like mosquitoes, not the larva. Um, and there is an option to opt out. Uh, community has to develop a plan to opt out. Um, the original deadline was this Saturday. That has been extended to May 28th. So um, I think a lot of communities were dealing with the pandemic and not necessarily focusing on mosquitoes earlier in the year and in the winter when this came up. Um, and so, so basically, if a municipality wants to come up with an alternative plan to control mosquito populations. If there is a public health hazard, then they have the option to do that. They have to notify the state and it's an annual opt out. So if we were to opt out this year, we could choose not to opt out next year and vice versa. If we um, don't opt out this year, it doesn't mean we don't have an opportunity next year. Um, so that that's the 30,000 foot view of, of mosquito, why we're talking about mosquitoes this evening. So, 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 and it's kind of going to be a kind of a two part, it's going to be a two part conversation tonight. And one of the, that's why Caitlin as a board of health is here because they took a vote three, four years ago about part of this. Um, now, now it seems that now it seems like the executive branch of the government, which is in our, is our select board um, or city council or a mayor is now, or in some manager, town manager and or city managers 
are being asked to make that opt out or opt in decision. So, so one option is that we have available to us is that we could join the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. Um, now out in, out in our area, these mosquito control districts, um, they're, they're not, they, it, they're not as popular as in the eastern part of the state. In the eastern part of the state, if you can see all those colors, that are, is everybody that belongs into a district. So in the eastern part of the state, it's, it's a, something that everybody belongs to. The Pioneer Valley, uh, Pioneer Valley Control, Mosquito Control District does offer some advantages to us as we move down to the decision about opting in or opting out of mosquitoes. Um, I mentioned before my conversation with Claire Higgins, who used to be the former mayor of Northampton, about the most difficult thing that, or most unexpected thing when she became mayor of Northampton. And she told me in, in with, a, with a smile that she never knew she needed to know so much about dumps, trash, when as a mayor of Northampton. And I would say one of the things that I never, as a member of the board of select, the select board would have to know about is about mosquitoes and control boards because typically that's always been the purview of board of health not not us board so we're getting a quick we're getting a quick overview jeff had talked about um the opt-in and opt-out um one and and i think that we're I, I think understanding what that opt in and opt out are is important for us. Caitlin, do you what what do you know of about that? Um, I've been focused more on COVID. I will be honest with you. I can tell you historically, we opted out. The reason we voted about three years ago, and keep in mind that a lot's gone by in three years. <laughs> in my life, um, was that it was a cost benefit analysis. Um, it was a very high cost for us. And I believe it was very local. It was Deerfield. Um, this was, a, a, I mean, I don't remember it being Pioneer Valley. I remember it being much more local. And the spraying and the traps that they were using, um, we reviewed it all and it was, thousands of dollars that they wanted from us. We did not have that. And we also did not feel that we had a problem with Triple E. And our public health nurse, I mean, I, we looked at the numbers, we didn't have any numbers. <laughs> we didn't have, and when we, so we opted out of that. Now, when I've read the emails from the state, what I believe, and Jeff, if you could help me out here if I'm saying something wrong, is that if we opt out, then the state, it's not that the state comes in and sprays for us. The state will review and see if there is a need. And then they will fit the need they will then do the remediation if we opt out of our, a local. See, I'm sorry, if we opt out of the state, then we have to then join, I'm sorry, if we opt out of the state spraying, we have to join something or come up with something on our own. If we don't opt out of the state, it's not that the state is just gonna come in and spray the state is going to assess the need. They're not just gonna dump chemicals everywhere is what my reading of it is. They're gonna do an assessment first and then see if we, and so that is why, you know, our budgets are super tight. And that's why I thought, okay, if they're gonna do an assessment before spraying and find that we have the need, then we'll let the state do it. 
However, it, it's not no longer up to the Board of Health. It's up to you guys. <laughs> um, I know. <laughs> but I would tell you why three years ago we opted out was because it was cost benefit. I mean, it was thousands of dollars they were <laughs> requesting and we didn't see the need for it. And maybe I got lucky, <laughs> but we didn't have a need for it. Yeah, oh. You're talking about when you say opt out, Caitlin, you're talking about the um, the local one, right? The local one, right. They, right. they approached us and asked us, they got a grant and they wanted to know if we wanted to be a part of writing the grant. I believe that was, that was when I say opt out, it was, it was a grant yeah. opportunity. Yep. And, you know, we said no, um, because we were going to have to put in, we we're going to have to match some funds and we just yep. didn't have it. And I didn't, I didn't feel, and we discussed it as a board and it wasn't my decision. It was a vote you know, and we discussed it. And, um, you know, we didn't feel at that time that it was something that we felt was threatening Sunderland. Um, we've already received an email or a voicemail asking not to have any spraying. Um, so we, we've been part of the state plan over the last several years, correct? Yes, and, and yep. we, I don't believe we've had any spraying or I have not been notified of any spraying. Uh, Jeff, I mean, well, you just came in, <laughs> but I, I, I have not. I don't recall any over the last several no, years as, either, right? As the Board of Health, I have not been notified that the state has come in and sprayed. So, you know, over the last few years, either we've been lucky, we've been, you know, the, the conditions have been optimal, especially since we are a swamp. <laughs> um, we've been, things have been okay. Not to say that's the way it's going to stay. But I will tell you, as of today, we did receive a phone call, um, a, com a complaint of a citizen asking, knowing that this mosquito thing was coming to say that, please, we don't, they would prefer not to have spraying because mosquitoes are part of the ecosystem and do good for other uh, wildlife. Um, and I think that's part of a town discussion, I, I, I would assume. However, it is now no longer, it's no longer part of the Board of Health. But well, we, 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 we would still look at the Board of Health for, of for a conversation, but mm -hmm. in, in the Pioneer Valley, in, in Franklin County, Roe, Heath, Vernonson, Greenfield, Green, Deerfield, Shutesbury, um, along Hadley, Northampton, Granby, South Hadley, Chicopee, West Springfield, Southampton, um, to the south of us belong. And the, the, the one thing about if you opt out of the state program, one of the things is that you have to have, you have to have a plan uh, in place. Right. You, the town has to have a plan. So right now, we really don't, and the plan, the plans can be varied. The, so what the mosquito control, if you do, if we, if we were to join the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District, and we did, and we opted in, that means, so if there was a health emergency, the state could come in. But the one advantage I see about joining, having, being part of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control is that they go out and they do weekly sample sampling of different sites. And so they, they, they basically you're, you're, you're providing a surveillance of, of where the mosquitoes are. You know, they, they, they're gonna tell you, they, they set up traps, they set up, they send them to the state for identification. They know the species, because there's certain species that carry different things like the Zika, they have, we have Zika, which for the, the normal person's not a problem unless you're, you happen to be pregnant and get bit by a Zika mosquito, infected mosquito, then, it, then it's a health issue. Um, but for the most part, what the Pioneer Valley, um, the, the Pioneer Mosquito Control is that they go out. So if there's a triple E outbreak becomes in our area, and the state says, we'd like to, we're gonna come in and spray. You have the opportunity at that point say, wait a second, why are you, why are you coming in to spray the whole town? We, we know where the mosquitoes are. These are where the mosquitoes are. We think that you, you can do it by 
back, you know, targeted target areas. So, you, you know, backpack spring and or truck spring, depending on where the things are, if it's, if, if a health emergency is declared. So I, I think Jeff and Jeff, we just started, and this is a lot of discussion started. Thank you, Susan, because uh, of an email Susan Triolo sent to us. Thank you, Susan. And, and again, um, and I said it earlier, there's, we, the, the board depends on our residents to help, to, we, we want active members of our community to, to talk to us if there's a thing of concern. We, we, again, I know today a lot more about adultification and larvicide and all of great things than I knew a few days ago. And that's because of an email from Susan. Um, so Jeff, what's going to happen over the next few few days is Jeff is going to do some investigation and kind of bring some stuff back to us. And maybe maybe have somebody come in from the Pioneer Community, you know, Mosquito Control Project, and they'll be able to, to help us with that. So Caitlin, um, what Jeff will keep you abreast. Um, but I we're going to we're going to gather. Welcome. Gonna ga welcome. Yeah, we're going to get we're going to gather that information and. And I, I know, um, speaking with with a couple of people, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure that um, they they want to hear our voice. Uh, Joe Comerford and Natalie, they they want to hear what what the town has to say to make things, you know. So we're going to start. Susan, did you want to add anything? Uh. I really don't know anything about this. Thinking about the environment, I know that uh, bats eat a lot of mosquitoes. So being part of the ecosystem, you know, that's what the bats eat. They eat, you know, a gazillion pounds of them a day. Um, uh, have, have the triple E mosquitoes been found anywhere in the valley this season yet? Does anybody know? It's still, it's still early, early yet, right? It's so early, and 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 now actually that was a good. That's it's interesting because in my conversation about mosquitoes last that last couple of days, one of the reasons that the state airborne spraying doesn't work is typically well, I'm going to say it doesn't work, but it can do better is because is typically by the time the triple E and other things migrate up here, it's late late in the summer. And they're very cool evenings. And I'm an entomologist, but what I've learned is that the mosquitoes um, start bur burrowing under leaves. So if you try to spray when it's cooler outside, the mosquitoes wouldn't be affected by the spray because they're under leaves. That's what I'm being told. I don't, again, so that's why you you could do better thing by. Uh, larvicide by by putting pellets into you know these pellets that will that inhibit and kill the the larvae before they grow, and it, and it's you know that catch basin you put them in catch basins, but the other other good thing about mosquito control the one thing is that could help us is it it they also look at ditch maintenance, um, so that could and and if anybody's in the town of Sun uh, for a go. while. Talk ditches. <laughs> well, I mean, because you want you want your your ditches to flow, right. so you you don't you don't want your you don't want your ditches to be stagnant. Keep so the water moving. It would be very nice if they it. did flow. <laughs> yep. So so there there there's there, there that's that's part of the conversation that Jeff will be researching also is is how Sunderland could maybe utilize the the control some of these control projects to help oh. us with our ditch maintenance as well. Oh. So there's a, there's a lot of, there, there's like most things that you start off here, but then you, it expands out. And, and um, we're, are, there we're state at, funds? are there state funds available? I'm always thinking, you know, yeah. we want to do everything we can, but we're all really tight, <laughs> you know, um, with this, are there state funds attached? You know, they, they're pushing, but they push for spraying. Are they also pushing for maintenance, though, and giving us state funds? Well, and that, and that's what we actually, Caitlin. That's what we're we're going to look at. That we're going to start looking for. Um, 
I, I know the 5,000, the 5,000 right now it costs to join the Pioneer Valley is $5,000. Although um, I was told that that's, that's negotiable. So since we're first joining that, that's something Jeff, Jeff will look into, see if we can, uh, we can cut a deal with that. But um, well, I, I have two questions then. One is um, what would they be spraying? And the second question is about um, whether Sunderland uh, is in line for any of the federal infrastructure money. I sort of understood from someplace that every town in the state is going to get a certain amount of money. And could that could I the, don't I don't know what they I, I, I don't know I don't know what they would spray. Um, as far as the federal money, Jeff. Yeah, so um, I think you're talking about the American Rescue Plan funds, right, Susan? from January. So the infrastructure is limited to water, sewer, and broadband. Um, as far as there was additional guidance, I think, put out today, and, and I didn't see that expand at all. But both the ditch maintenance and mosquito control were part of, I think it's the local hazard mitigation plan priorities. Um, so being in that plan would make us eligible for, um, I think it's BRIC grants, building resilient infrastructure and whatever the C stands for. Um, but there, there are some federal funds available since that was identified in the plan. So we could certainly look at that, uh, but I, and it's certainly worth asking a question if we can use the um, American Rescue Plan funds as well. We don't have to say it's for mosquitoes. <laughs> we need to keep our water running for lots of reasons. Absolutely. We don't want to undermine our roads. And 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 but I know I know our friends across the river, Deerfield, they they when they first started, they 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 ended up finding a lot of their they they were upgrading a lot of their culverts. Yes. Um, because the culverts weren't large enough that was causing the water to back up. And they, they believed if they had gotten involved with the, uh, the mosquitoes earlier, they, they would probably would have been able to get some monies to cover those culvert work also. So that, that's, that's some advantages to be involved. And, 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 and again, not, not to belabor, because we are gonna, we're gonna talk, just gonna do a little more research and, and get some information to us so that we can share. But you know, one of the, and, and Caitlin, this is right. This is going to be right at the board of health alley. Is that what cities and towns? We we have a responsibility, to, and and that's to educate our public and and to do outreach. And and we found with the COVID that that was probably one of the most important things is is education and and the outreach, and and that's one of that's one of the things that the Pioneer um, Mosquito Control. That that's one of the things that they do. They they help us with the outreach, the the public awareness, um, and and they they would their spraying would be at, at the absolute last resort. So, but we're gonna we'll get we'll get more into that as time goes on. Okay. okay, we'll work with you guys, and if we need to come up with some grant money, we'll we'll work with you guys. Thank you, Caitlin. David or Crystal, you have comments on mosquitoes. Nope, not right now. We're just going to wait till we get some more information and and see how it goes. Susan, you all set? No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, Jeffrey, let's get it, let's move it to uh, how we do it on the municipal lien warrant article. You want to talk about that? Sure. Caitlin or Gina, do you want to introduce it? I think it's a Board of Health warrant article. Um, yeah, it is. Um, I, I brought Gina along because um, Gina is our um, housing inspector. And um, what this warrant article is about is adding teeth to our um, fines, our, our, the way we, we try to get our landlords and uh, to uh, abide by you know when we when we ask for remediation um you know we're having a hard time and so uh gina uh oh i don't know oh okay 
<laughs> Jeff, you can't do things like this. I'm Sorry. not that computer literate. I thought I was getting kicked off. So um, I'm going to have Gina um, explain, you know, what the, uh, you know, uh, the general laws, uh, chapter 40, section 58, uh, will allow her, give her a little more teeth in what she's doing. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Um, this is something we did in Montague when I was a director of health there. And we, we passed this at town meeting in 2013. And it was basically um, a, a way to a cost effective way to collect charges and fees from property owners. And where, where this really comes into play is like so many things, you know, the Board of Health has probably two handfuls at the most of, of landlords and property owners that just don't want to, you know, follow an order to correct, um, which results in me going out multiple times for one violation. So the way it works with almost everything on the housing side is I do an inspection um, from a complaint or whatever. I, I send an order asking that that be corrected and then I go back and see if it's corrected. Because that's you know pretty straightforward. If I wind up going back several times, then we would have the authority to say, you know, there's a $50 in, inspection fee, re-inspection fee, if I have to go back a third time. Initial inspection, re-inspection, third time I go back, there'll be a fee. Um, we did this for years and years in Montague and most times the fee didn't get paid and we had no mechanism other than the housing court to collect a $50 fee. So we're not gonna do that, right? It's gonna cost us more to collect it. This allows us to collect the fee um, that is unpaid via a municipal lien. Jeff, one, one question, it, it, uh, when it, it talks about um, unpaid and non-contested non-criminal disposition charges are set forth by each department amended from time to time, is that, would that like include parking tickets? I don't know. I, I, well, they have their own mechanism. I th yeah, I think you're right. This is, this is, um, say, uh, if the the um, housing, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, your building inspector had something or another department. Yeah. This is just allows, you know, um, they're just saying each department. That's why okay. they're, and this is all obviously non-criminal. It's not, um, and I, I would tell you, I think that once, I think it would only need to be used once. <laughs> And with and like like Gina said, I we probably have two land two people two owners, um in the entire town, and we have a lot of rental properties, um that don't that pretty much ignore the rules, um and if we use the town lawyer, we have to use the town lawyers. Now we can't go to housing court anymore with our inspectors. Housing court changed and said, we need to have our lawyers. The town lawyers have to go at our town hourly rate. Now, if you're gonna go at town hourly rate to get $50 fee, you're now in the hole. And that's just to make them know that we were serious. <laughs> That they need to have proper living conditions for their for our residents. You know, I mean, we're not asking, and we don't ask for much. We work so hard with these people, with these landlords. <laughs> By the time Gina asks for an inspection fee, she's already been there three times. We do not, um, you know, we don't levy fees, fines, we don't, until it's, until you guys know which house it is because you've driven past it 
<laughs> and there's couches on the lawn and there's, and it's been there for three months and people are like, how come the Board of Health hasn't done anything? No, we have. Yeah. Short of picking it up and putting it in our own cars. <laughs> You know, we've sent letters, we've sent demands, but if we were going to take them to court, we have to hire our attorneys. And this is a way to do it without hiring our attorneys. And once they realize we do this, they will then start. And like we said, there's, it's not a rash of people. It's not, no, you know, it's just, and I'm sure if you talk to other departments, this is this is something that they probably deal with one or two people also. Okay. And, and the other thing to mention, Tom, just for clarity, yep. you know, if somebody calls me or calls us and says, oh, we can't be ready, you know, in time for reinspection, we, we give them more time depending on, you know, the the problem. So, you know, I never would intend to find anyone who called and said, I need more time. You know, so it's not a way of ambushing anybody either. Uh, uh, Gina, when uh, I, I'll be the on the whole in the town of Sunderland, I've been on the board for a few years. Um, I don't remember ever having a lot of people or residents complain about inspections, inspectional services in the towns. They they they've always been pretty. They've been always pretty complimentary about the, the job that's being done. So that 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 and, and that's from the building, plumbing, electrical, uh, health. And, and again, and people understand a lot of times if you're if you're being called into something, it it it's a lot of times there's it's uh it, it could be something that's not a pleasant. There's an argument or discussion that goes on between the owner and a tenant and so you could be put into some questionable situation, but but I, I have not heard concerns in a long time about inspectional services. That's great. So 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 Caitlin, what what you guys are asking for is you're you're asking you're asking the board uh, for a favorable ref, uh, recommendation to this, correct? Is that what you're looking for? It, it needs to be put on the at the town meeting to be yeah. voted. Yeah, it goes to town meeting. Um, David, Crystal, do you guys have any comments? David? Um, no, I don't think so. I think I think it's reasonable, especially when you we get the hist the back history now um, of you know the housing court changes and then how essentially you know uh, it, it cost a lot to deal with this, and uh, especially if we're not really having to utilize it very often. Okay. Crystal, thoughts? No, so I'm just, the only thing I'm curious about is like we're saying the non-criminal things. Are those going to be things like noise complaints and stuff that you're repeatedly on? No, this yeah, is not, okay. um, this isn't related. It, it's it's funny. It, we're putting non-criminal dispositions, but this, the police department has a way of getting their fines and they go to the district court. This is, and I think the way that they wrote Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 58, is to just make sure that everybody knows that this is completely civil disposition. Um, so anything like that, the noise complaints or anything, um, the, anything that the police would respond to, they have their own mechanisms. So if they give you a $40 ticket or a $100 ticket, that goes to the clerk magistrate. Yeah. You know, this is really because, you know, this is just a way that we get our money without going to the housing court because Jen used to um, two years ago, Gina, I think it was two years ago, our inspector could go to the housing court and they changed it so that we had to hire the town lawyer at 200. I, I don't even know. And I don't want to know <laughs> whatever an hour to drive from Boston or drive from wherever to go to the housing court and for $50. And it, so we just, it just, you know, it just made it, you know, and I, I swear some of the landlords know this. So they yeah. say, yeah, whatever, I'm not gonna do it. 
So, so Caitlin. Yeah. One of the one of the things I next time when I'm when I'm talking to uh, Natalie and Joe is I'm going to bring this up to them also. But it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't seem it doesn't seem fair that you would have to have a town lawyer to to move something like this in the housing court. Um, you could talk to them about it in the legislature legislative session branch but i'm pretty sure it was the judicial branch that did it uh -oh. um so i don't think that i mean they'll you know they can say something but this here is the legislative answer to it so they're going to yep. say there is a law on the books you guys just have to yeah which is what we're asking you to do okay so if you, you know what I mean, if you think about it that way, but you can bring it up and say, you know, did you guys realize this? But they're probably going to say, uh, yeah, the court system is a fight fiefdom of their own. Well, and that's good. I, I mean, I, I think that I, I think what you just said helps helps me understand it a little bit better because you're right. You you wouldn't be spending one hundred twenty five hundred seventy five dollars an hour for 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 the, town, the labor council just to, to bring them in. To get a fifty dollar fine paid when they've already the legislature has already provided this general law for us. Yeah, absolutely. To take care of it, and yeah, so this, we just it, had to enact it. And yeah, no, this it. it makes a lot of sense now because we, you know our our inspectors are used to just going up to the court. Yeah, and I think the court was sick of that. To tell you the truth, they didn't want it anymore. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, oh no, you still have, you have two members, you have quorum, sorry. Um, Ms. Drake Tremblay dropped off. I just wanted to oh, okay. make people aware. Oh, there she is. Huh? Okay, good. So I think that's what they did. They just stopped it from happening. Okay. They, they didn't want, I think they were getting, they had an issue. Now I'm getting lawyerly on you, but they had an issue of having a lawyer for the day in housing court. They couldn't yep. get enough defense attorneys. Yep. And so I think what they tried to do is scale down the actions in court. Yep. And okay. someone cleverly said, hey, if we can get the towns out of here. And they did. They did it because they knew we weren't going to want to hire our lawyers for small actions. Well, and I think Gina brought up a good point earlier too, is that, you know, we're not doing this until the third no. visit essentially. And, you know, and you look at, you know, if we're going to do a cost basis, you know, figuring here, it costs us money every time we send somebody out to do it. We're not charging for those first two issues. So. Right. And the, our, also our goal, it's with, we, we say this with all of our board of health stuff. Our goal is to actually get the remediation. Right, solve the problem. We want to solve the problem. Exactly. We want the garbage picked up. We don't want the neighbors having to see a couch on somebody's lawn and drive by it every single day. So that's our goal. Just pick the couch up and you won't have to pay anything. I promise. <laughs> you know, and yeah. so that's, that's and, where and we're you, at. And you know what? You can, you, if you have a couch, you can take it up to the Greenfield Transfer Station for $20 and get rid of it. Right. It's cheap. It's cheaper than the fifty dollar fine. Yes, and we try. We and Gina will sit there and discuss that with them and give them directions, and everything. Else. <laughs> you know, we try. We do everything. Right. And usually, your contracted trash hauler will, for a fee, will come and get it too. Yes. So. And so that's really our goal. So when we 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 do, but I think it's important for Gina to have this backing her up because it's not fair to Gina yep. to okay. work her butt off and not have this backing her up. Or frankly, for all the other people who follow the rules in town. Right. Uh, right. Okay. So, so that's why I'm right. here supporting this. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay. And we'll be talking. And we'll be talking about that shortly on okay. those Warren articles. Thank you, Gina. You wanted to add anything more? Uh, no. Thank you very much. It's nice to see all of you. Thank you, Gina. Thank, thank you, Caitlin. You. So you don't need us anymore, right? No, ma'am. We're all okay. set. Thank you, Caitlin. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, now, Chair's prerogative. How about the uh, minutes of May 3rd? Uh, motion on the minutes of May 3rd. 
Second. Ooh, we got a motion. Crystal, nice job. <laughs> motion made and seconded on the acceptance of the uh, May 3rd minutes as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. All right, Jeff, um, Memorial Day celebration. Do we want, uh, so the recreation coordinator is umpiring a game and maybe done. Do we want to hold that until the end or do we want to have that uh, so that he may be able to join us or? Sure, you can hold yeah. off on that. We can hold off. Okay. All right. How about the uh, uh, select board? You want to do the uh, select board uh, committee appointments, board and committee appointments? David and uh, Chris, are you ready to talk about that? Or do you would like another week to review those? I would probably say I need time to review sure. them. I'm not real sure exactly what all of them are. Yeah, that's okay. fine. We can wait a week. Jeff, do we uh, do we have any assignments that we need someone to go to uh, tomorrow, or in the in the near future? Uh, Thursday night is the capital planning committee, um, and I expect them to be voting on the the recommendations for the capital plan town meeting. Um, yep. Other than that, I think that there are no. Um, None of Scott's former committees are planning to meet that I'm aware of. Okay. All right. Well, Jess, let's do that next week then, okay? Okay. Can we make sure that uh, everybody has a, uh, a list of what committees they are, there are in uh, past uh, assignments? Yep. Thank you. Um, Let's try, uh, let's try the select board updates for $100. <laughs> David? I'll make it easy. I don't have any updates this week, so. No updates? So far, okay. so far anyway. All right. Crystal, how about your uh, first two weeks as a select board member? What do you think? A lot to learn. Well, I'll get there. Wait a second, Crystal speechless? Did I not speak? Yeah, you did. Oh, okay. I was going to say. <laughs> Beachless doesn't usually describe me. Okay. Um, I, I would like to, I, I just add that uh, for, for updates, um, it was such an encouraging um, report from Jeff and the Board of Health concerning uh, vaccinations. Uh, I, I think you're starting to see it in, in our national government, our state government, Dr. Fauci, um, how pundits, um, how they're talking about the, uh, the um, COVID now um, and, and about the, how the vaccinations have, it appears, I mean, when, it, when you look at the numbers, I mean, we are so used to seeing, you know, 2,000, 2,500 people being hospitalized or new cases. And, and lately they've been less than, than 1,000, around 600 in, in most cases. Uh, the deaths going to, to single digit instead of triple digits. Um, those are all, all very positive things. And, and I said earlier, I mean, we don't like talking about COVID, but it's it's something that, that we're dealing with right now. That being said, Sunday at the City Tree Brewery, uh, 10 to 1, maybe later, but you can make a reservation. Johnson Johnson, one one shot, going to be offered. Um, local people will be doing it. Uh, the local clinic, the uh, South County. South County uh, EDS will be putting it on and there'll be had MRC help. So um, if you haven't had your vaccination yet and uh, you're eligible, come on over um, that or make your reservation go online. It's, um, it, it's, it's important right now. Uh, town administrator updates. 
Um, yep, just just a couple things. Um, with with the nice weather comes people who like to walk their dogs. So uh, just a friendly reminder to please pick up your dog's waist, um, especially if you're you know around a park or a school area. I mean, or I guess anywhere streets, but it, it's it's been noticeable in the parks and, and schools. And so um, just wanted to put that out there that, that uh, you know, be, be neighborly, pick up after your pets. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, we're going to look at maybe putting up a couple more signs in areas that we've noticed that there's been um, an accumulation of dog waste. So that was one thing. Um, the second is construction uh, work continues on North Main Street. Um, last week under the supervision of the project Arborist, there was some air spading done around the button ball tree. Um, and that was for the, the slight road widening on the west side of the street. Um, there were also some safety concerns that were raised. And so MassDOT has added additional signage. Um, you know, there are flaggers present and police details when work is going on, but in the evenings after the crews leave, um, making sure people know that, that the road is under construction um, and to slow down and to stay in your lane. Um, so we're working with them. The contractors had raised the possibility of a detour for southbound traffic along North Silver. Um, and I've been talking to the, the highway super and the police chief. I think that we would prefer to uh, keep traffic going, even if it's alternating traffic um, along North Main Street. But I, I did want to raise that in case the select board had strong feelings one way or another. Um, that, that, that is something that, that we're talking about with MassDOT and the contractors, but they assured us that they would not um, it, institute a detour unless the town was fully on board. Um, and then the last update is on complete streets. Uh, the line striping crew came out uh, and looked at Falls Road and originally we were gonna paint um, edge line, white edge lines on both sides of the road. And when the crew came out there, they said, if we do that, there are going to be some places where the road is too narrow and you're not going to have legal travel widths. Um, and that might cause liability should there be an accident in those areas. So rather than painting the edge lines, we've, um, suggested that they put sort of the, the bicycle graphics that are on South Main That's right funny. now um, along the edge of the road and hope to slow traffic that way um, and put up more shared roadway signs with pictures of bicycles and cars so that um, vehicles understand that there are bicyclists on the road as well. And um, I've reached, Jeff, yes. if, if, if we do put the, the sharrows, if we right. do put those in, they cannot be spaced as they are presently. <laughs> yeah, a, a little they're more than way, 10 feet apart. <laughs> they're they're yeah. way too close right now. I, I, yes, the engineer took that into consideration. I think, um, I, I know at least on Sil South Silver, they're going to be 200 to 250 feet apart uh, or in between each of the sharrows. I don't know if they're going to be slightly closer on Falls Road, but yes, that was that was something that was mentioned in those discussions as well yeah. as the distance between them. Yeah, because we, we we really heard it from, we heard from people in South Main Street that, and, that, and not only just from South Main Street, but a lot of people that use the road that uh, they, they were too much, so. And people and people really don't understand what that, those shadows mean either. Susan? Yeah, I wanted to um, ask, um, since I would be majorly impacted if there was a detour on North Silver, what would be the what would be the factors for that decision? Um, if, if traffic is going to be rerouted 
along North Silver and, um, it, you know, through our neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that th this was, um, again, just a, a discussion point. Um, I would have to sit down with, with the highway superintendent and the police chief and understand. I, I think that they both, as soon as they saw the email, raised concerns with doing that, um, mostly because it, you know, it is a, a more rural road, North Silver. Um, and not used to certainly truck traffic. Um, and so I think that, that they had concerns about the width of the road and how trucks might navigate and how they would connect back to um, 116 or 47 South. Um, so Quite we honestly, would... that would be a nightmare. I've seen those trucks on Route 116 or 47 and having those trucks coming through here for one thing, but the other thing is that there's a lot of pedestrian traffic. There's kids, there's animals, um, and the you know having those huge trucks coming through our neighborhood would really be a nightmare. It's already enough that we hear them, you know, driving down 47 from where we live anyway, and on the highway. Yep. Uh, uh, Jeff, on. Um... I I, uh, I I don't think that would be a good idea. I I I and and I I I'm I'm amazed that Mass Mass uh, DOT is being so lenient with a contractor that they're allowing them to leave the road in the condition they are in the evening. Um, that I don't think that that's that's normal, and I just think if they were if they were made in, and I'll, I'll go back, look at the contract, but they have to leave the road in a passable condition. And at times the road is not in a passable condition, especially, especially on, on like on a Saturday after, after a, a day and a half um, of use. So I, I think, you know, if it, when they're, when they're getting ready to leave up for a three day weekend, they, they, they have to do a better, better job of, of, and again, I'm not a civil, um, but they have to put hard pack and or um, TRG or, or or some some kind of rock on the that that that's going to be maintained. And I thought there was uh, an email with us with a uh, recommendation about um, lowering the speed limit to 30 miles an hour. Um, I would say that that I would think um, that would be an I don't think that's a um, a bad decision. I, I would I would think that we should talk to them about about doing it. That that right now during the construction, that the, the it totally makes sense that you lower you lower the speed limit. And I don't know when you when you're scheduled for your next meeting, but I would strongly suggest that they consider lowering the speed limit and put down the you know the sign boards to reduce the speed limit. And uh, also, I would think that they need to be. They 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 have they have to make they have to be made to stand up and accept the responsibility that they have to have two passable lanes of traffic and right now they do not have two passable lanes of traffic in my opinion. Yeah, so one of the things that they did say that they were going to do this week is uh, put a temporary patch over the trench that they're done replacing the the storm drain. Um, so that'll help make the northbound uh, lane more passable. They also mentioned something about reducing the speed. And I think I think what I remember MassDOT saying is it, since the speed is currently 35, they can only reduce it 10 miles an hour. So they'd have to reduce it to 25, which again, I don't think is, is an issue, but I don't think that they could, I think they said they couldn't do it to 30. It has to be by 10 miles an hour. Uh, okay, and, and and there's a sign there that says that, and there's a sign that says uh, um, speeding in a construction zone fine doubles. So set it at 25 miles an hour and put the police there. And, and guess what? The people that use that road are the same people day after day after day after day. And if and if you hit them with a a if they're going through there at 40 miles an hour and double that fine, 
they do it once and they're not going to do it again. I, and I use it, so I, I, I'm, I'm subjecting myself to that that fine. But I, I would say that if to lower the speed limit would be strongly encouraged. Mm -hmm. If they can't maintain the two travel lanes. Right now, they can't maintain two travel lanes. I'm just coming down here tonight to the meeting tonight. I had a car pull right not too far from the Tozlowski house. I had... A car, a car literally pulled right into my, into my lane, and I, I had to come to a full stop. So, okay, thank you, Jeffrey. Anything else? Not for me. Okay. David, Crystal, uh, Susan. Oh, all set. Okay. I just wondered who who is the person accountable for. Uh, maintaining the road, the passability on the road the way it should be, as opposed to what you're saying it is. Who's responsible for that? Well, I, it's a mass DOT project, so mass DOT, mass DOT. Well, it should be the G, the general contractor, and it's in, it should be enforced by mass DOT people. So Jeff Jeff will be talking to them. Okay. Crystal, any any thoughts on this? Okay. I got no problem with seeing it down to twenty-five. No, not not not. I there, I'm I'm I was very concerned. I saw a group of motorcycles go through there this this lap this this past weekend, and I don't know. I would not want to have been on a motorcycle on that road. No. And I, and I, I and I think that you should they should have the proper signage and and let people aware. Okay, we can move on. Thank you, Jeff. Um, you want to do, uh, Jeff? Are we anything changing with the budget? Uh, there, there was one thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, I believe in 2019 there was a warrant article to appropriate $500 for the North Sunderland Cemetery maintenance, and um. I don't know. Is that was that supposed to roll into the budget? It was not in last year's budget because it had been a separate Warren article. Um, and so I guess the question is, I I added it to the budget for right now. Um, I, I don't know if it was meant to be an annual appropriation or that was a one time thing or if you wanted it to be a Warren article again. Um, well, one, I don't. I don't specifically remember. I, I I remember. I remember doing it, but I also remember asking that the. I I think it. They have a, a their group that manage it has a. Uh, the group of three or the three, the three something or it, it's a different. The, the, they were supposed to share with us how that five hundred dollars was being spent. Um. And I don't ever remember seeing an email. So I know uh, Ken Kushai was one of the people that came in with that. So if you could contact him, Jeff, and see if they if they have a um, if they if they do have a report upon how the money was being spent. But I think that was one of one of the requirements was that they they let us know how the money was being spent up there, and it was basically there because of. Uh, there's a, there's many veterans graves up there and there's the town has a obligation to help maintain uh, the graves of veterans. Mm -hmm. So, so I believe that's how that's, I believe that's where the 500 was going to. So, so they were going to share with us how they, how they, uh, they worked on the maintenance for the veterans. Okay. Okay. Um, Peter or Jess or anybody from the school committee's questions or comments on budget right now? Are you all set, Jess? Okay. I, I, I was just wondering. Um, I, I saw the, the we're gonna we're gonna talk about soon the um, on the annual town meeting warrant review. We're gonna talk about the uh, playground. So if you want to hang on for that, we'll be talking about that shortly, okay? Thank you. All right, uh, David, you, would you like to talk about budget or you almost talked out, talked out on budget? 
I say let's let's dive into the warrant review head first, you know. <laughs> okay, dude. We'll do that. All right. So we'll cross out the budget discussion until next week. Um, let's talk about Jeff. You want to put up our uh, our uh, annual town meeting warrant review, please? Yes. So, so what, what we're going to try to do, um, Crystal, um, we're going to start going over these um, articles. What, we, what, what the board has to do is we make a, we need a, a motion um, to include these on the, the warrant. So we, we, put, we put them on by, by motion. So um, like article one, um, that, that's kind of has to be there. But that being said, Either you or David would make a uh, motion to it include it on the warrant, and we would include it on the warrant in uh, next week or the week after we talk about recommendations. Unless there's something like this, we could make a recommendation so we don't have to talk about it again. Is that would, would that be okay with you, Dave and Crystal? Yeah, no, that's just makes... do it once, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like so this. let's start with let's start with Article One, and this is basically is to hear the reports of the select board and the Sunderland School Committee and all their town officers. Uh, you want me to do in one motion procedurally? Let's do it on something like this, if it's a, if it's a, something that non, not, don't have to think about it, yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Too. Okay, all right, I'll make a motion to include and recommend article one. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to include and to recommend. Is that, that okay, Jeffrey, you have a problem with that? Nope. That would be okay, right? Okay, on Article 1. Any discussion? With hearing no discussion, all those in favor to include and make recommendation on Article 1, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have a 3-0 on that, Jeff. Article 2. To see if the town will vote to appropriate the total amount of $17,144.39. We're going to need to correct that, Jeff? Yes, sir. Okay to pay certain bills. Um, and so on this one, I would entertain a motion to include and we'll get additional information to discuss. Yep. Motion to include. Uh -huh. Okay, Crystal, just so you know, um, stuff that we can't, funding has to, if, if we get billing that comes in after the fiscal year ends, this is the only way for us to pay these bills is that town meeting so that and that's why you need a four-fifth vote on these because it's a path it's a past due bill sorry so we have a motion made and seconded to include article two all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. three zero on that one article three uh this one is usually we don't make we don't usually make a recommendation on this jeff because of it's um uh, it's talking about uh, other elected boards. So on this one, I will entertain an article to include the salaries of the uh, municipal officials. Uh, motion to include article three. One second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. Jeff, um, I think on, on the uh, select board, those are, we all get paid the same, don't we, David? Uh, I think the usually the chair used to be a little bit more. Okay, um, is that what you're re, is, that, is that what you're researching right now, Jeff? On that? Yeah, we have okay. to go back a couple of years back when the salaries were in there, that. but I think okay, I think there was a slight difference. Yeah. Okay, we have a we have a motion made and seconded on Article Three, and this is to set the uh, salaries and compensation for elected officials. This is to include, and the select board will not be making a recommendation on this. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero on that, Jeff. Article four. Um, this is the uh, this is the uh, municipal budget, so we will be just entertaining a uh, a motion to 
put the budget on this year's warrant. Oh, I guess we have to. Motion yeah, to have. include. <laughs> I second. Okay. We'll be we sure to come back and discuss that. Yeah, we have a motion made and seconded. We won't be making a recommendation at this time. Article four, the, our, our 20, FY22 fiscal budget. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Article five, the declared at three zero. Article five is a capital budget um, to include the Warren article. Um, at this time, we'll ask for a motion to include. Motion to include Article Five. Second. Motion made and seconded Article Five to include the capital budget. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero Article Six. Um, this is the municipal charges lien. I think at this time we're just going to put an article to uh, uh, include so we can talk about that a little further next week or the week after. I'd entertain a motion at this time for Article 6 to include. Motion to include Article 6. Second. All right, we have a mark, uh, motion made and seconded Article 6. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor, favor of Article 6, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Article seven. Um, to see if the town will vote to raise and approve transfer from bill of funds or otherwise sum of money for the post employment benefits of Sunday Elementary School employees. Um, on this one, I think we're looking for a uh, uh, a motion to include at this time. Yeah. A motion to include because we have to talk about the final amount and everything. So yeah, yeah. and how and how we and we're, how, we're, how we're going to pay for it. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Motion made and seconded on Article Seven to include. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Article Eight. Um, to see if the town will vote to provide a sum of or sums of money to purchase replacement firearms for the police department. I just at this time we're we're going to be waiting for a recommendation. Uh, talk to the chief about this. So, uh, Article Eight, be looking for a motion to include. Motion to include. I second. Okay. Any discuss? We have motion made and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of Article Eight, their inclusion on the warrant, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero, Article Nine to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer. Otherwise, twenty thousand dollars for the care of the Elm. Jeff, we thinking about doing this differently. I thought we were going to include it in the budget. It, has this changed? Uh, no, so it, it is included in the budget. Um, I wasn't sure that you definitely wanted to do that, um, so that's why it's here. So if that is a more more of a placeholder in case you wanted it on the warrant before the the deadline for adding warrant articles passed. So David, David, Crystal, do you, do we need to discuss this? Um, what's your thoughts? Well, the light the lightning rod is probably a one time expense, right? But then you've got like the ongoing um, like the three-year root invigoration program, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, I, it probably does make more sense to have it in the budget as a, you know, an ongoing cost because we, we're going to have to periodically take care of that tree. Okay. So, so we, can, we can leave it off right now. We're not closing. I mean, we can always add it back on. So, because uh, it, it, it made it on time. So if you want, Crystal, you have a thought? on this one? Yeah, I, I, I know, I just wanted, I guess I just like to see some more information on that. That's fine, okay. Let, let's, no. Jeff, let's, let's, let's skip over that for right now, okay? We'll, we'll get ready for that, we'll look at that next week. Put a hold on number nine, article 10. Is article 10 is uh, CPA money, to $200,000 to pay for uh, the childhood playground at the school. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, place this on the on the warrant 
um, since it was forwarded by the uh, uh, CPA group. Yep. Motion to include. I'll second. A motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye to include. Aye. 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 Article 11, another CPA, and this is to $69,000 for the um, work over at the Graves Memorial Library. Um, and it's about 69,000. We're gonna do uh, uh, pointing of the bricks as a foundation and um, some restoration of the foundation. Motion to include. Motion to include Article 11. I'll second it. Any discussion? At this time, all right, all those in favor of, of uh, putting Article 11 on the warrant signify by saying aye. 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 That's three zero, Article 12, another CPA. This is open space. Um, it's, it's used to money to you be used to design, install an irrigation system for the soccer field and the overlaid outfield from the secondary baseball field contingent on securing a well with sufficient water supply for the irrigation system. So basically they wanna, they wanna be able to irrigate the uh, soccer field to maintain it. Um, but the uh, water district um, believes that they do not have sufficient uh, water for that. Um, so what we'd want to do is to look if we could drill a well. So if we could drill a well, they can find the amount of money. Uh, if they could find enough water um, at a sufficient depth, then they would like to spend us $26,000 for that. So I would have a motion to include Article 12. Motion to include. I'll second it. A motion made and seconded to uh, include Article 12. Any other discussion at this time? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 That's three zero. Article to include, Article 13 to see if the town will vote to approve $20,000 uh, to extend the foundation and make the uh, building, the restroom, ADA compliant. Motion to include Article 13. I'll second it. Okay. Motion made and seconded to include Article 13 for uh, uh, making the public restrooms ADA compliant. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Um, aye. Three zero. Article 14. Um, this is our housekeeping one, right? Our annual. This is the housekeeping for the Sun on this the, the Community Preservation Fund. Um, I guess I, I'll make a motion to include and recommend for this one because this is our formulaic one, right? Yep. So, okay. Oh, Jeff's got a question there. Jeff? I'd suggest just including just, it and not recommending it because we don't, just because we don't have final figures um, oh, okay. on what the debt service is going to be and the estimated revenues so we don't really know what's going into the undesignated reserve uh that's a different story then i'll withdraw a motion for recommendation and inclusion and um just present a motion for inclusion only this time okay i'll second it yeah motion made and seconded for the inclusion of article 14 all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. thanks Three Jeff. Zero. article 15 Okay, this is uh, basically where we are um, setting the funds or the values, how much money can be expended to each one of our inspectors for the inspectable ser inspectional services. Um, Article 15, I would, I would ent entertain a motion to include and to recommend on this one. Yeah, motion to include and recommend Article 15. That's not gonna... Okay, motion made and seconded to include Article 15 and to recommend. Any discussion? All those in favor then, please signify by saying aye. 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 Article 16. Uh, 
to see if the town will vote uh, to join the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District for initial one year term. Um, I think we probably should include it, um, but I don't think we need a recommendation on this yet. We still have more information to gather. I would agree. Uh, motion to include Article 16. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of inclusion of Article 16, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Article 17 is a, a proposed by by uh, by uh, petition, right, Jeff? Yes. And and this is a declaring a. Can you go back up one? Uh, yeah, safe community. Sorry. I bet bylaw declaring Sunland to be a safe community. Um, this is a citizen's petition. Um, I think it's interesting to note that the uh, the Sunland police at right now do not enforce immigration laws to begin with. So, um, so this 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 uh, goes on. We 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 will take a recommendation, uh, to, a motion to include, but it's by our bylaws it would be included because it was put in by a petition. Motion to include. I second it. Um, all those in, we have a motion made and seconded. I, I would, I would like, like, the only thing I would like to say at this time is um, on citizens, citizens petitions, it's a tough one for the board of selectmen. A lot of times we don't, we don't, we, in the past we haven't made recommendations. Um, so I, so if we could just take a look at that, read it over and, um, we can make it, a, you know, if we want to make a recommendation, we can, or, or we don't have to. So at this time, we have a motion made and seconded to include the citizen petition. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. Article 18. This is, uh, is changing the... Uh, the personal bylaws, in particular, the vacation schedule. So, Jeff, you want to talk about this real quick? Sure. So, the personnel committee discussed that uh, a new employee does not get any vacation time currently within their first year of employment until they have a full year of service. Um, this is non-contract, non-union employees. Um, and thought that that might be a hindrance to recruiting new employees. And so wanted to make one of the two weeks that they're eligible for after a year of service um, available after six months of service so that you could spread out the, the two weeks of vacation that they'd earn in their second year or that they would have earned by completing their first year um, take it after six months, one, one week after six months. And then if they take that week, they would get another week um, after a year of service. So we're not really adding anything then, right? Just changing when, when they take can it. take the first week, yes. Right. They're not getting any additional, there's no additional benefit. Is that, is that how you understand it, David? Yeah, it's just, right. It's just to allow you to take it at a, a little earlier than usual. No extra time. Okay, Crystal, questions on that? No, I'm good. I'm just, no, I'm good with that. Okay. Um, all right, do, do, David, what do you, you want to make a recommendation also? Um, and a motion to include? Yeah, I can do both now, I think. I'll make a motion for um, inclusion and recommendation. I'll second it. Discussion? I, if it's not increasing, it, I mean, you're still getting, you're still having the same amount of time, right? Right. So, yeah. All right. The, the only thing I'd, I'd say is that, you know, if somebody worked, a new employee worked six months, took a week vacation, and then left town employment before their first year, under the current bylaw, we, you know, they wouldn't have had that one week off. So that, that's the only difference. 
monetarily. Yeah, if that situation were to arise, right? Right. Yep. I would probably hire the wrong person then. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a motion to to and second that to both include and to recommend. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Articles nineteen through twenty four. Um, Crystal, consent. these these are nineteen through twenty four are what we call consent articles, and this is just the how the uh, our normal things at the town normally does. So, and you see them everywhere every year on on these consent articles. So, I like a motion to include and recommend on those. Okay, we have a motion made and, and uh, seconded to recommend and or to include and to recommend the articles of consent. Any discussion? Okay, hear no discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, Jeffrey, we got that. Can I ask a, a quick question? Sure. Um, the revolving funds, I know the plumbing and gas inspector fees went up. So yep. I, and you did vote to include and recommend, is there an opportunity to change that expenditure limit? Because if he's taking in more money going back out, does that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, I mean, don't forget that. I mean, this is expenditure limit. So you could, you could make, you could come back next week and say, you know, that number should be 8,000, not 3,000. Right. Okay. Right. I just yeah, wanted just to make sure that we that we weren't locked into to these yeah, figures. To that number. Yep. Yeah. Just okay. give, just just give us a number. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and you're telling me and warrant Memorial Day celebration ceremony. Yeah. So, let's see. Did did my screen change for you all? No, no. We're, we're still looking at the warrant. Never mind. Um, so, uh, the, the current plan is to have a ceremony similar to last year's ceremony, um, which would be gathering at the Riverside Cemetery, um, with more people than we had last year. I think last year it was just elected officials, um, the officiant uh, trumpeter playing taps and then the honor guard um, and one or two residents. Um, but I think we would open it up but not have the parade this year. Um, so that, that's the, the basic plan um frontier is going to try and provide a, a band member to play taps and perhaps a small ensemble for the national anthem and that would be on friday uh i believe friday friday the 28th or saturday the 29th sorry friday yeah okay. it should be friday. the friday yeah Okay, so we're not going to, so basically what you're saying is we're not going to have the parade, but we'll do it the same way. We'll still be meeting our, now are we, we, we're all going to meet down at the uh, cemetery? Yeah, that's what we did last year. Yeah, and then we okay. would, we would Zoom, uh, live Zoom, we would have FCAT broadcast as well and record and, and put up a video so that people can participate. I think some of the thinking was that um, people may still be nervous to gather and, and to walk yep. together and based on people's speeds, you might, it might be difficult to maintain distancing. Um, yeah, it's sometimes difficult to keep us in an organized fashion when we go down there as it is. So I think um, that seems to be a reasonable scale us back up and then next year, hopefully we can kick back to our full Celebration. 
Okay, let's just get just so so Jeff, could we uh, get it posted up on the uh, web page as soon as possible so everybody knows about it? Yep, absolutely. So you are planning though on allowing the public to come this year? Uh, no. I I would have to I would have to talk to Jim about what he thinks um, w would be appropriate. I think that it, it's it's hard because you know what do you, you going to let in the first fifty people and then have somebody, you know, tell it, telling people to go home and watch on TV. You know, how do you make that determination? Okay. Um, well, last, last year, Jeff, we, we allowed, we allowed residents to come. We just have to, we just have to maintain the social distancing. Right. You know, so. I, I, how I many think, residents did you get last year? We didn't get a lot. I don't think, did we? A small handful? Yeah. Um, yeah, we had, a, we had a few. I, I, I would, I would, I would, I would say we we do the same thing. If someone, you know, yeah, and and when people enter, you know, and when when they enter, we just we just make sure we we let them know, you know, we have a, you know, we could have a, a small sign, get a small sign made up, and, and 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 just say, you know, maintain social distancing, you know, and 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 I, I to me, I mean, I think it's a a long tradition in our town to to honor our our to to honor Memorial Day um, in a very solemn way. Um, we should still be able to, if people want to come, um, and and I mean some some people it it is a very very um, important thing. Um, also, be outside too. So and and, and and yeah, I I unless. Same with other words, I would say, yeah, you can you can come. Just maintain social distancing. We should have it, and we'll have a sign. We could have a couple signs coming down. You know, we get a couple of those lawn signs made up, come walking down to the cemetery, so people go by it two or three times. Look, we, you know, we we're glad you're here, but please maintain social distancing. Right. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff, anything else? No, I think that's it. Okay. Wow. All right. Um, I, I only can see Jeff right now. Is there anybody <laughs> else that would and not that's just a bad thing. Is there anyone else that would uh, that has has anything to add? I saw there was a some people I don't know why I can't see anything else right now, but uh, um is it does anybody else mm -hmm. have anything uh to say or would like to uh Public comment. Going good. once. Oh, I'm good. One, thank you. Going once, going twice. All right, Jeffrey. Um, our next meeting will be uh, Monday, May seventeenth. Crystal, how do you like meeting number two? Well, it's a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, get, next week we're going to talk about budget. I guarantee you'll be snoring by the time that meeting is over. This is more like the normal uh, meeting time. Yeah. Okay, I can yeah. Tell. All right. All right. Um, Grudgingly make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> and I, I would just uh, before before I take a vote, I just want a a, a real quick um, offer my condolences and the board's condolences to Scott and his family. Yeah with the passing of his, of his dad. Scott, we're thinking about you and your family. And uh, if there's anything that we can do, you you make sure you let us know. We're very sorry to hear your dad's passing. Motion, motion been made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Uh, declare us out at 807, please, Jeff. Thank you.